Today, we're talking about music education and the birth of piano labs. I have a beautiful Wurlitzer 214 VA, a piece of history. We're gonna talk about this instrument, we're gonna to listen to it, and then talk about piano labs of history and piano labs of today. Stick around. Hi, this is Patrick with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. Currently, I am in a very beautiful store, Kauai Piano Galleries of Michigan. If you haven't checked it out, please go visit it. There's one in the Detroit metro area, and there's also one in Traverse City, um, if you're in the glove, as I've been taught about the Michigan glove. Um, but check it out. Uh, we're doing a video today on a really cool product, the Wurlitzer 200. Um, I actually own a Wurlitzer 200 at my house. It's an incredible instrument. Um, the, the technology behind the Wurlitzer instrument is a piano action that is striking reeds, and so it's making this really beautiful tone, and we're gonna play it and listen to it here in a second, um, but just an incredible sounding instrument that really there's nothing like it, and you know, I'll say this about all electric pianos, whether it's a Fender Rhodes, a Yamaha, uh, there's, they have the CP70, the CP80, uh, Kawai made uh, the EPs, the uh, 300 series, but all of them kind of had their own way of creating um, an instrument that can be, you know, turned on and turned off um, and really kind of start projecting and be portable and have all the benefits or the benefits of playing piano, but brought to you in a new electronic format. Um, and you know, this idea started in the early 1900s, I believe in the 30s, they started experimenting with magnets and strings and tine and reeds, and they were trying to create an instrument that was portable um, and uh, you know friendly for a student for classrooms. And so the birth of the Wurlitzer um, 200, it was actually a 100 before it was a 200, uh, had that idea. It was limited keys, you know, 61 keys, um, and was uh, you know built to be able to fill out a classroom or to take it with you um, and be portable. And so the student models and the teacher models actually had a cabinet system, um, and this one behind me, the, the 214, um, so whenever you see you know different letters, um, it's the 200 family, but the 214 that actually stands for um, a four by eight speaker system that's below it, that's angled. Um, this is the VA, so it has the visualizer, um, which is really a cool thing. We'll take a look at that. It actually lights up whatever note you're, you're hitting and it can be on the key bed that's up there so that you can have a classroom of kids behind you and say, hey, we're gonna be playing this B here or this C here. Um, and it shows you also on the staff. And so really kind of bringing music together with visual, the visualizer, you know, the visual aspect of learning, um, which has always been kind of a disconnect for students. It's, you know, you're playing here with your fingers, then you got to look up and see the sheet music and it's on the staff. But, my, you know, I, I'm used to seeing, you know, the C through C with the sharps. And, uh, and it's just one of those things where the patterns sometimes don't connect and, and getting that step is essential when you are learning music. Um, so let's take a listen to the Wurlitzer. Um, this was uh, really a, a unique thing in its day. Um, and uh, you know, if you grew up in the 1950s and 60s um, and even into the 70s, there was a good chance if you studied music at a college or university that they had a Wurlitzer lab. Um, and there was a couple different models that were able to control and listen to the different units in the classroom. And so the teacher could say, hey, I'm gonna listen over here to, to Susie's or to Jonathan's keyboard, see if they're if they're playing well and I can you know talk to them in their headset. Um, but really just a, a, a great piece of history and it sounds very awesome. And so the Wurlitzer, we'll talk about what happened to the Wurlitzer um, and what's happened to Piano Lab since. Um, but let's take a listen to it first and see how cool the visualizer is when you're playing with it.
So why don't they make electric pianos anymore? And what happened to the labs that had all these real acoustic instruments in it? Um, you know, acoustic in the property that they're not digital. Here, this is uh, an electric. And so a lot of people will confuse the terms. Hey, I want an electric piano, but really what they're saying is they want a digital piano. Electric piano, plugged into the wall, does have an amplifier, um, but everything is mechanical in it. Um, digital pianos and keyboards today are you plug into the wall um, and it's all you know like your television or like your computer, it's all electronic and, uh, and the sound is simulated, um, usually taken as a sample, um, sometimes as a, mo a modeling system. Uh, but there's been a resurgence in the old school sound. And so if you're, if you're used to hearing this sound in music, you probably associate it with the 70s and with rock and roll. And so the Wurlitzer and the Fender Rhodes are, I would say, essential to music in the 70s. And, and, uh, and this sound quickly grew out of the classroom and became more of, hey, let's add this in as layered or texture to rock and roll music. It fits in great in the mix. It's got a very unique sound. It's punchy uh, and it can be a lead. It can be in jazz, it can be in rock and roll, uh, and it just makes the music more exciting and more fun. Um, and so the Wurlitzer kind of went that direction. It went into rock and roll, it went into the stage performance. Uh, and you know, today people are you know, reimagining that and buying old Wurlitzers. The value on these things has gone way up. They're buying old Rhodes, they're buying old CP70s from Yamaha. Um, and there's really no way to, to replicate this sound other than just have the real thing. Um, digital pianos today, Try to replicate it and it can sound close, but really once you hear this thing powered up and you're in the room and you hear the tremolo going, it just, it sounds very incredible. Um, so if you've ever played one, please leave comments because I bet you will agree with me that there's, the simulation does not, uh, does not equate to the real thing in this situation. Um, it would be like, you know, flying an airplane or flying a flight simulator. It's just, they don't, they don't add up and it's, you're never gonna get the, the thrill of the sound of an electric piano. Um, and to talk about piano labs, this technology, you know, this primitive technology of showing you the notes when you're playing um, is a very useful, having a headset on and being able to talk to your, to your, uh, your class, classroom of students is very useful. That technology has, is still with us today and it's, and it's gone through the digital pianos and it's gone through, um, Yamaha makes a fantastic lab, Roland makes a fantastic lab, Kawhi makes a fantastic lab, um, and universities, are still using the idea that was put in place way back in the 50s and 60s, a classroom full of a teacher module and student modules that are around and having access to listen to them and also to educate and help. Hey, I'm listening, it sounds like you're missing the, the, C, the C sharp here. Um, or hey, it looks like uh, you, you could use a little help here. Um, and so there's a lot of great technology out there. And if you are an educator or if you are someone who's interested in learning in that way, there's plenty of, of you know, classrooms around the country at universities. Um, if you're in the music program, you've probably had to take one, had to take beginner piano, um, and you've seen everything from you know, the $100 keyboards that you learn on all the way up to you know, the couple thousand dollars CA series from Kawhi or from Yamaha, the, the Clavinova line, um, and Roland makes, makes uh, the HP series. So uh, really incredible technology and um, you know, it's, it's, it's cool to see that an idea that was born way back in the day on something that, you know, really kind of changed with music and, and became more of an instrument that people loved um, in a studio mix rather than uh, in a classroom uh, has really started to shape music education um, and the idea of learning in a classroom, but also stays near and dear to our hearts in our music mixes and listening to rock and roll and listening to uh, that, you know, that very nice 70s vibe. Um, well, let, let's, uh, uh, you know, if you've, if you've ever played one, please leave some comments. Please tell us your experience with them. Uh, let's start a discussion on this because I think uh, it's really neat to hear everyone's perspective on what's the best electric piano or I have a Rolitzer, it was great, now I have a Rhodes. Um, there's companies like Vintage Vibe that is recreating the, the Fender Rhodes with piano hammers. Um, so just leave comments, let us know what your favorite electric piano is. Let us know if you learned on one of these um, and you remember this, this, whether it's a beautiful green or a hideous green, you can tell us what your opinion is. Uh, I'm Patrick Moore again with Alamo Music. Thank you guys for watching. Mm -hmm.